What's good, YouTube? And welcome to the house. I just got out of physical therapy for my arm. For you guys that don't know, I heard it a while back. I'm getting my range of motion almost all the way back. It's going really awesome. And I'm also losing weight at a pretty good pace. It's like my body knows my arm is back, baby. Also, the shirt is really loose. It's the first time I've said that in a while. I hope it shrinks in the wash. That being said, you only get one body. The greatest investment you can make is in yourself. Make sure you're taking care of yourself. That comes from Papa John. Let's go ahead and get into today's market watch, starting with Phantom Baby Rage. It's the official day one, baby. We are here with OTS stores able to sell the product. That means more listings are going to be hitting, but it's not as many as we typically see. I think we would usually be at 50 to 60 of a lot of these listings by now, but it's only 40 sellers of the top and 30 sellers of others. And I noticed not many people are apt to sell the virtual worlds cheap early. I was telling you, I feel like this is the sleeper of the set that it's likely to go up we're seeing the tri brigades fall very very fast at first i thought it would kind of be what everyone's after then i went wait a minute this this smells a little overhyped now it smells underhyped it's in a weird place and looking all around i still think that virtual worlds are more so the sleepers and mutants they do have upward potential depending on the next set but how many more cards than 14 will you get and can you fix their issue so everybody looking early prices are not falling fast enough in some senses but they're really settling towards where i would have thought they would be at towards their lowest in the first place zeus is going to be the top heavy extra deck chase card alpha is the card that people are going to want to play three of and both of these are semi-generic but not everybody is going to go towards their power rise of the duelist gave us very good three ofs and droplets and talents and does alpha stack up to that is he really the new pancreatops he's very good but we'll have to wait and see the impacts that are coming. I can't wait for the online tournaments with these guys. That being said, the competition isn't just on TCG Player. I've heard a lot of great feedback already from Yu-Gi-Oh! Daily. People are loving that they have the deck cores. This is one of the huge things they missed from Yu-Gi-Oh! Singles, having these deck cores all together. All the virtual world at 45. Three of everything. And then you have Mutants, you have Dual Avatar, and even the Phantom Knights here at 100, and then Tri Brigades. Being able to get it all from one seller, not having to pick from here and there, and having a very competitive price tons of people have said they really appreciate this look and it's not like two of one of them where you have to go shop another it's three of freaking everything and with the competition that they've brought it's not like everybody is just sleeping on them though you see uh, arsenal had to go up a little you also see alphas around 60 but they actually put torn scale way down from yesterday's price in fact under the entire market at 22 dollars of course you can use code what's good five over here for the next two months but they're really tearing up the market on things they either project might be lower or just want to give a deal now to get other traffic. Tier 0 is not just sitting around, though. You see, they were actually the lowest on Torn Scale for a bit. They're undercutting on Alpha by quite a bit at $53. And of course, Code Watts Good 5 also applies over here. So, this healthy competition, Yu Gi Oh! Daily is coming in, doing what they were meant to do, but other stores aren't going to just sit there. Tier 0 is firing back. They also have really cheap Tri Brigade stuff. I think undercutting daily by a little bit as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's very, very close. I love what daily is doing, causing this competition. I'm loving that tier zero is head to head ready for it and relisting their singles as well. And when one play sells out, look who else is cheapest on Zeus. It's like a dollar off. So both of these places doing extremely well. I know I'm sponsored by both to talk about them, but I only bring you guys these deals when they're the best on the market. I do not, under any circumstance, like, I don't accept payment to bring these guys in front of you. I only make money when the code's used and when the sale is good for you guys. And that's how I'm always going to keep my sponsorships. Now, with TCG Player, and we're going to see full quantities through the weekend, a couple things can happen. We've seen in the past, prices just chill out cool down it's nice you have a week or two but lately something with an opening weekend tends to get snapped up bought out spiked by either the demand of people waiting for this timing like friday's the time to buy or sunday's the time to buy monday something can start going up or it can happen immediately i don't know that that's going to happen with this set or what really would be slamming into the meta that people find their money to do that but never under uh, underestimate the demand of opening weekend look at the prices 
time what you're willing to pay, try to project where things are going, and make your calls. Market man's not always right. I, I can't always have all the answers, but that's what's been happening lately. You either have extra time or something goes and skyrockets, and you've got to decide what's going to be on that rocket going up, up, up. Now, on the collector's market, Sacred Beast came up in the live streams, and we toggled over to Armatile. The secret rare Armatiles have gone up very well for the ultimate rares as well. Sacred Beast has had bubble hype throughout here and then the first editions are crazy up towards 200 but when you think about it his other versions just don't look as good this is from an old set an ancient set you could say and it is so collectible back in the day this would always be on buy list for 12 to 14 meaning the buy list people were sell selling it for 18 to 22 and people would just let this go for six dollars consistently they wouldn't care they had it but it's always been worth money it's always been selling at a good rate even in the past and if it was selling for 22 back then you can see the market price 31 and the sudden grab for sacred beast thanks to the structure deck thanks to things it, it just has those perfect storms on old cards that are collectible that were always money on buy list they just exponentially seem to rise and this is one of them now the sacred beast also came up in conversations like do you think these are great to grab they're very iconic gx era ultimate rares and they've gone up a lot are they going to cool off are people going to be throwing these out no the people who are into these are in them for the very very long term that's why you're seeing every single listing continue to get snapped but where will the sales rate be where will actually people be letting go of these rather than continuing to snap them up that's the true question and we don't know we don't know how that will go where it will be who has how many and they've been, the ultimate rares haman uria and uh raviel have all been disappearing continuously and then their other versions have been too since the structure that came out these have been super hyped, not just for their playability, because let's face it, they're not doing too well at the any events online or otherwise or dueling book rated table 500, but they do have cool combos like the Curious Combo. It's because they're super collectible and they mean a lot. They're the pseudo-god cards. I think that when I'm looking around the market, though, I'm thinking I would rather pour my money into something like Dark Paladins or DM, you know, OG Eras, but the GX Era is a very strong second, and I do think that, continuing on, you will not have cheaper price points into these cards, so if you can find a reasonable seller, you can find a price you're okay with, go for it. What is that price? 600 a thousand it really depends on what you're willing to spend and who has it because that's what these are it's who who's willing to let it go at this point rather than you being sane and having the money for it that's just the place you're in now speaking of other old buyouts that i found weird Le levia dragon deadliest has a hobby league one super rare as other better versions original first edition and the likes but when it comes to the super rare it got bought out recently and i forgot it existed and then i was like wait I remember people having stacks and stacks and stacks of this at a dollar fifty. So this is another one of those buyouts that I think will go very poorly. While it does have a market price of eight now, as people try to complete hobby league collections and that goes well, I think sales rates on you trying to push this out will look very much like Cyber in Dragon, the Mattel action figure promo. Whenever you look at the Mattel action figures, everything else went crazy and got rolling buyouts, and this was at 80, 90. And I bring this one up time and time again because look at this. It's fallen down towards 17, 18 without re rounds of buyouts and i think it would be very poor to do that because you have other better versions of cyber and dragon that people actually want and it will take so many attempts to buy this out to actually price spike it so i feel like levia dragon there's still going to be people with bricks of them that just didn't care that look and go huh put them all at eight and they're gonna sell them so i feel like this was kind of a bad buyout but then again we'll see what do you guys think of hobby league collections in general especially the hobby league cards like green kappa that's one i always like that aren't the parallel rares which makes them playable but what do you guys think of the cards like that will people be adding them to their hobby league collections these pieces of older history or do you think it's i'd rather have first head original what what do you guys actually think because i'm kind of split in the middle and i think it's more towards this where sales rates are going to be horrendous on those if you're trying to sell black luster soldier of chaos it always reminds me of butters from south park this card is back above 80 for the most part very few sellers under that mark and when i'm looking at this card i am just thinking man when's the reprint and a lot of people ask me that too it didn't appear in gold series for some reason a lot of people were along the lines of that'll get a reprint in gold series it's finally gonna come they're gonna take care of it and they're this'll it's not really seeing a lot of play though 
and for a card that's not seeing a lot of play that can maintain this price is kind of crazy i personally would be selling it and waiting it for the reprint but it continues to start to trek back up where people were letting it go for 63 65 before and you can see over time the actual sales has it still in a solid range towards 80. my thought is sell get rid of this it's not being played get it out but if you do need it for your deck for some reason it's one of the best link threes behind the nightmare unicorn which is still a better link three because somebody in my comment section said this is the best link three it's it's a unicorn this card is cool but now you have access code talkers and other cards like this that just make this look so weak in my opinion and uh it's really not played much anymore i just want to point and laugh <laughs> at everyone who bought parlor dragon maid whenever the initial leaks for the dragons uh well dragon maids coming in gold series happened dude the, the other humanoids we didn't know could possibly get reprinted like laundry word in that initial link and you went and bought out parlor this is another bad and one of the last bad dragon maid buyouts we might see now if you are thinking about dragon maids chamber is one of the only ones not reprinted it is an eternity code we've seen this spike before and if you're using that tcg player link in the description down below costing you nothing extra to support the channel directly for the cards you'd already be buying i usually wouldn't suggest a dragon maid but this will be one of the last hard to get pieces of the deck and it's one that does get played so i would consider getting your chambers because as this release and people get them all they're gonna go fine i guess i'll pay and i think there's a lot of people who will be paying 20s instead of 13s at that point maybe 18s maybe 20s we'll have to see but i do think it will spike the price of this as people get the rest of the pieces from gold series I've noticed that a lot of Rise of the Duelist prices, and hey, thanks for following over on Twitch. I've noticed a lot of these prices are going down right now. Triple Tactics Talent has a motivated seller, but then many, many under 100, all the way through the front page for the most part. So we're seeing more sellers start to go down on a lot of Rise stuff. I've noticed, besides Nadir Servant, a lot of Dogmatica stuff starting to trail down. Ice Dragon's Prison's been pre holding pretty solid overall towards 16, but here comes some 15 so a lot of things dripping down a little as we get our new sets people are throwing their money at gold people are throwing their money at phantom rage and this is starting to get left out because a lot of people already have what they need so we're trickling down in price a little even without an unlimited version of the set actually should all schism that's way up versus the other day okay so this is up towards eight dollars i think last i looked this was still around five so that's a little bit this has been floundering i i know now the the blessing wilson market watch he messaged me a bunch of cards to look through i haven't really looked at the prices i just pulled up the tabs and went tab 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 so uh, the blessing wilson special he said all of the cards that are coming up here trishula dragon of the ice barrier ultimate rare that's pretty surprising to see it at 200 it's actually up i think again from the last time we looked this has had the rolling buyouts it does have a higher rarity in the dt version which we've had that discussion will the ultimate ever pass the dt similar to how ultimate dark arm passed first edition dark arm i don't know the ultimate uh, versus the dt that's a really good question dt is not one for one of course that secret rare but uh yeah this is people really really like this and the ice barrier structure is coming as well ah we're here finally we have the tri brigades coming into hand here into play today and tanky is 150 this is actually about where it was it seems like a ton of sellers are lining up trying to take this price last i looked it was like 165 160 and now down to 150 so it looks like more motivated sellers on this even though it's up way up versus market price it's been up here this has ancient sales data which is going to make its market price weird to move so kind of interesting it's going down from the last time we looked at it not as many people drinking the kool-aid on this one pot of desires ultimate rare market price 78 and there's quite a few light plays before we get 72 75 i do think this one's highly undervalued over time though you look at duality you look at other cards like this i think that this card will eventually be well over a hundred dollar card the question is when and we do see this still get into certain metagame play people will play two of them in this deck or three of them in that deck I, I think you'll see this make its way back into metagames and people will be playing this so uh i I'd like to how duality got played in draco and that's what spiked it again and then it stayed up there i think desires will have its time 
Book of Moon Ultimate Rare. I know this had buyouts that it fell out. It looks like uh, 6 9 nice. It looks like it's still pretty falling out overall. 74 75 So it, it's relatively cheap compared to our first projections, but it's stabilizing as well. Its market price is around 70 You're starting to see it uh, go up versus that listing. Um, I, I like GOAT format a lot. I think the Champion Pack one still way higher rarity. I do think this has potential to go up over time. It had its initial buy. It had a fallout after that. It means Deep Pockets are interested in this somewhere. You could see it get rolling buyouts in the future like Sukiyomi. It's just young right now and OTS stores also can't take place in selling this card until four total packs have passed. So when OTS pack 17 comes out, then OTS stores can also start dealing with this and you'll see more copies start to move out of the market permanently into those people that want to put them in their goat decks or hold them as investments. Abyss Dweller Ultimate Rare. This is pretty darn cheap for what it is. Uh, yeah, very cheap. Yeah, okay. This is kind of interesting. 62, 63. So this is fun. I remember the hype. People paying 80s, paying 90s. This just hasn't aged well. I wonder why that is. Do you, do you guys not like the picture and how it looks? I always did complain like if it was an ultimate error, it would look a bit dark as an ulti. What's up with this card, guys? How do you feel about it? Access Code Talker. It's at 70 solid. I think we've covered it at 70 solid before. It's still a great uh, Link 4. I think a ton of people are playing it. I think as Eternity Code hasn't got a reprint or any kind of special edition, which we're in that boat for a lot of core sets, it'll probably continue to trend upwards. But 70 is where it's been resting for uh, a little bit of a minute now. And Ultimate Rare Black Rose Dragon. Let's take a look. Uh, where are the first Unlimbs? 67, 69. I think we brought this up recently against the Ghost Rare and how it's funny that it's become so expensive when people used to consider this trash. And you have tons and tons of Unlims here, uh, just near mint. Uh, so the near mints aren't probably going out any time for Unlims. But the first edition at 3 freaking 50 when you have Ghost Comparables. I think that's more than the Unlimited Ghost Rares last time we looked. Let's look. Black Rose Dragon. So first edition ulti. Would you consider that better than Unlim? ghost i don't think so i think that would be yeah it's priced higher i feel like unlim ghost should be better than first ed ulti but maybe i'm mistaken what do you guys think about that i personally i i love to actually i know i've been asking a lot what do you guys think about that oh comment section no i genuinely like to enrich my opinions off you guys in the comment section and sometimes i actually get a new viewpoint on cards and how they are i personally my initial reaction is that i think the unlimited for Ghost Rares is better than a First Ed ulti, but the gap of First Eds and Unlims in general are absurd, and the Ultimate Rare market has definitely cemented itself. That's that's kind of a fun conversation. Would you rather have three Unlimited Ghost Rare Black Rose, not anything of the value right now, or three ultis to hold on to for 10 years? Which do you think would age better? I personally think Ghost Rare, and the market will develop, especially with Ghost Rares being back. Thank you for watching today's Market Watch. Thanks to the Blessing for the little uh, group of cards. I just wanted to kind of like look through them, live react. I think that was kind of fun. Um, and again, thank you to the Discord and people that have been helping with Market Watch picks and that sort of stuff. Definitely been making the content more varied and the live streams as always have been helping. I really appreciate the community aspect of helping me create Market Watch. And I know a lot of it is still what I find interesting at the end of the day or where I want to go into the market, but I've been having a lot of fun with it. Also, be sure to check out Tier Zero as well as Yu-Gi-Oh! Daily with code WATSGOOD5. Both of them shooting out prices here on the current market but we might see some more competition as well as we hit to the everybody has phantom rage day tomorrow on the official mass release past just ots's and then people getting their cases in and busting the market's going to get weird on this one i feel it's so it, the top heavy isn't that heavy and then the medium range you have one good medium card and the rest has really fallen out I wonder what's going to happen. Will we have a World Chalice situation? Remember back with, uh, all the way in Code of the Duelist, the, the Weekend 1 World Chalice buyout? What's going to happen? Because something just doesn't feel right here. And I'm trying to pinpoint. You have two chase cards, a medium, and then tons of value spread out, and then the Starlights. Is Starlight Chasing really doing this for us? Like, with the new ratios, it's 
feels pretty good to, if you're a Yu-Gi-Oh player to look at a brand new set, see utility like this actually be around this price when you need multiples and then the rest of it just be so cheap. I, I like that aspect, but then again, I guess a lot of it's not meta warping and we're clouded into the current format. Oh, I digress. I'm getting off into tangents like I do on live streams. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed the conversation. Use that TCG player link to support the channel when shopping. And of course, check out the other websites. Uh, this is like 20 minutes. I'm sorry. That's not usually where I go, but I feel like a lot of these conversations were interesting at least.